Hello, Adam and Anthony and any other progressive agents and uh, anyone else who may be watching this. Thank you so much for your time working with my claim so far. I do very much appreciate the time you've put in and uh, the cordiality and courtesies provided. Um, unfortunately, I do have a disagreement with the settlement price and I hope that you uh, uh, enjoy this presentation um, disputing the price. To start off, of course, we have some famous negotiators from cinematic history here. So I hope that finds you well. Alrighty, as a quick overview, what we're going to be looking at first is a settlement review. Oh, and I should start by saying I will try to provide a link to the slides in my description here so that if you cannot see this very well, you can still follow along. So we will start with a settlement review. Then I'll give a quick background on Vespa. We will look at the current market. Then we'll look at my Vespa. And from that, we'll then have my demand, the figure that I've come to, which I think is a better settlement. That figure will be informed by these three middle sections here, especially the current market, the actual listings of used Vespas uh, at this moment. So let's get into it. You all should be familiar enough, enough with this. This is the settlement provided by you all for me. Uh, we have the settlement value based on an NADA and JD Power pricing at $1,000, sorry, $1,010. We also have, of course, uh, with taxes and fees up to $1,095, a deductible of $375, which I believe per our phone conversation with uh, Adam, that would actually be a $250 deductible as my Vespa was involved in a hit and run, more or less, and we are considering it an uninsured motorist. So the question to be looking at throughout this presentation is, does $1,010 buy my 2013 Vespa LX50 for t Now, another way to look at that is, if I have $1,010, will I be able to buy that vehicle or another comparable vehicle? So, quick little background. Vespa scooters are resale value champs. J.D. Power did a study uh, a couple years back looking at the resale value of the whole automotive market, cars, trucks, Vespas, scooters, and as they analyzed, it was seen that the top brand is Vespa scooters by a large margin for their uh, retention value. Reasons for Vespas to retain their value are, number one, they are considered a luxury brand. Number two, there are a limited amount on the used market. In the United States market, Vespa currently represents 20% of the new scooter market, and this is all taken from rightapart.com. I encourage you to look at that if you have any questions. So, further from Power Sports Business, we have Vespa holds best resale value New York Times report. And this was prompted from the JD Powers report as well. Kelly Blue Book then came to release a fair amount of, of information here in December of 2018. And in that, they showed the retention of value of a number of scooters out there. So in 2018, at the time, a five-year-old scooter was my 2013 Vespa LX50. And Kelly Blue Book found that the 2013 Vespa LX50 retained 75% of its value. Again, I encourage you to look further at that if you have any more questions, and you're more than welcome to ask me for any clarification there. So 75% retention. From J.D. Power, my scooter, the 2013 Vespa LX50, had an MSRP price of about $3,400. 75%, which I recognize it is no longer 2018, but 75% of 3400 is about $2,500. Now just for fun, if we wanted to evaluate for current inflation, that MSRP of $3,400, we'd be looking at about $4,400, and 75% of that is $3,300. I apologize for all the numbers. Really the one to focus on, $3,400, 75% of that is $2,500 approximately. So let's go ahead and search the market. Let's see if $1,010 can buy a comparable Vespa there. I will disclaim that most of these listings we will be reviewing are from Facebook Marketplace. As a previous information source stated there, Vespas are a little hard to find on the used market because it's so desirable and we'll look 
exactly how fast it can be snatched up in, in just a minute here. But um, yeah, let's go on in and look. Can $1,010 buy a Vespa? Let's see, skip two pages there. Oh my goodness, there we go. So just a quick little overview here. I'll have listings posted, the screenshot from a listing. Up at the top of the screenshot, we have two numbers in red here. The top number provided from JD Power. It's the original MSRP of that specific vehicle. We won't look at that too much, but that's just for you to know. Underneath it is the NADA and JD Power uh, average retail or resale value, which is equivalent to the $1,010 that was offered. That is the same place where that value comes from. So just to do a quick little comparison, again, I have a 2013 Vespa LX 50. These are all also 50cc scooters here. So a 2007 Vespa LX, slightly older than mine, driven 2,800 miles, so a little over my mileage. NADA recommends $970 for resale. It is being listed for 2,000. My exact model here, but in a different color, 2013 Vespa LX, less miles than mine, 830. NADA recommends 1,010, as they do for mine. It is being listed for $5,500. We look over here, we have a 2015 Vespa Sprint which, for whatever is worth, the Sprint, the Primavera, and the LX are all essentially the same vehicle under a different name. They are all, uh, for these purposes, 50cc vehicles. So slightly newer than mine, about four times as many miles, 8,300 miles there. NADA recommends their average 1,410. It is being listed for 1,900. A 2007 Vespa here, older than mine, 8,800, over four times the miles. miles. Um, NADA recommends 970. It's listed for 1,400. So this, this is just to build up credibility that the NADA values are significantly lower than what the actual market would reflect. And for whatever it's worth, you can see on this vehicle here, the quarter panel is quite heavily damaged. That may come across better on the uh, slides if you have them open on your screen, but kind of rough cosmetic shape there. Uh, so take that into consideration. By the way, do we see any 1,010 vehicles here? Anything I could buy with 1,010? I don't think so, unfortunately. So moving on, a 2007, older than mine, and I think we've got the, the rhythm down here. Older vehicle, 2007, about the same mileage. NADA says 970, it's listed for 1,500. 2002, over 10 years older than mine, 8,800 miles, more than four times. NADA says 960, listed for 1,900. 2001, 6,600 6, miles, NADA says 915, listed for 1,600. NADA here says 915 on a 2001 Vespa, it is listed for 1,700. And it's also in fairly rough cosmetic shape, again, Nothing that I would be able to purchase with $1,010, unfortunately. Moving on to some other examples here. These are generally a little newer. We have a 2018. NADA says 9,400, roughly, listed for about 2,700. NADA 1,400, listed for 3,600. NADA says 24, listed for 5. NADA says about 3, listed for 37. All this to say, again, the NADA values are significantly lower than what the actual markets suggest. Now, just for a little more evidence here, we have some larger motor vehicles. These are not equivalent to my vehicle, but just go to reinforce the idea that these NADA values are tragically lower than they ought. NADA says 13, listed for 45. NADA says 12, listed for 36 says 9, 970, listed for 28. Says 970 again, listed for 23. Significantly lower. A lot of these are, the NAD values are more than half what it's actually listed for. Now I wish I could say that I was cherry picking these listings to, to work in my favor, but truly, the market is just the way it seems. Vespas hold their value very well. $1,010 would not be able to buy such a comparable vehicle to mine. Now just to show things that are not private sellers, very quickly, these are from dealers. Many of them are not local, unfortunately, just due to the nature of the market. 
Uh, but we have a 2011 for 5,000, a 2018 for 2,900, 2017 for 5,000, it's got it for 2,000, 2,000, 5,000, 1,600. Again, do we see any available for $1,010? Unfortunately not. And man, our Vespa's fun. I do want to get another one. I was able to find one record of a sold Vespa. I did reach out to local motorcycle and scooter uh, shops here, dealers, that sell used vehicles to see if I might be able to get some live figures of the resale value of used Vespas. Unfortunately, I was not able to. But alas, we have this 2019 Vespa Primavera listed at the time I took this screenshot, which was, I believe, yesterday, listed four days ago, and sold there at $5,000, just to show how desirable they are, up for only four days, gone like that, in DC. So, what can $1,010 buy? I actually did find something. So, we have here a 2009 Vespa LX, and this is a 150 cc LX, so it is a larger engine motor than my own Vespa, which would mean usually a higher price tag. NADA recommends $1,055. It's listed for $1,000. Great, I could buy it. Whoops, description says it starts in idles, but dies out when you turn the throttle. Also, no title, and they say it probably needs a new battery and oil change. And you look at the actual condition, got stickers all over it, it's scratched up, it's missing a mirror, it's just in generally rough cosmetic shape. So that is what I could buy with the settlement, a vehicle without a title that doesn't actually drive. Also, I could buy this vehicle, which looks like it is sold from the same seller. NADA is 915, it's listed for 500, it is over 10 years older than mine. Granted, it is lower mileage. If you see the cosmetic shape here, especially on your own screen, again, this one is trash. It's missing components in the front, um, just all together. It's missing a mirror, and it looks like you just, I don't know, rode it through the dunes. It looks rough, and of course, they say no paperwork. So I could buy another vehicle that does not have a title, um, which I will not do, quite simply. So I will also highlight $1,010 from J.D. Power is the average retail value, as shown here in the screenshot. And while I'd like to think that my Vespa was average, unfortunately it wasn't. I, I'd like to think it was, well, contradict myself there. I would say it was above average. I would even say it was a baby Vespa. It had, when the accident occurred, 2,170 miles on it. Now just in the Vespa owner's manual, we have our first bit of scheduled regular maintenance should happen around 620 miles. The second should happen at about 3,100 miles. The, just the second round of regular scheduled recommended maintenance, 3,100 miles, my vehicle at 2,200, couldn't even live to see the second maintenance. That's how young it is, and for what it's worth, the scheduled maintenance on the Vespa owner manual goes up to 37,000 miles, just to show how young my vehicle is, 20, 21, sorry, 22,000 miles versus 37,000 in the manual there. So it was quite a young vehicle, had a lot of life, had a lot of value left in it. Just to go further on uh, the, the mileage one could expect, from modernvespa.com, a forum for Vespa enthusiasts, we have people touting mileage as a 14,500, 27,000, 60,000 miles, 40,000 miles, somebody here is saying it's usually not until 50,000 miles that a Vespa needs serious engine work. And mine was at 2,170. The user at Quora says that a well-maintained Vespa can live easily 30 years there. So mine was a spring chicken, if you will. And again, my Vespa, not only mechanically was it so young, so ready to live a much longer life of high value, but cosmetically, it was in perfect shape. This picture taken just today, we had rain today, I do apologize, that has made it into the picture, so wet Vespa. Um, but yeah, this is my Vespa, it lived indoors most of its life, from 2013 to 20, 2022. And when I say live indoors, I do not mean it lived in the garage, I mean the previous owner had it inside their house in their den area for the first nine years of its life, which was only 250 miles of its life. So, really well taken care of, climate controlled in there. When I got it, it was garage kept for a year and a half, continued that very good cosmetic condition, and after that, it was, uh, it was outside, but it was covered by a 
name brand quality cover to keep all the elements away from it. It also did see regular maintenance under my care. And again, it is in nice condition. I, of course, do have it wet there from the rain today. I had it uncovered since the insurance evaluator has come to, uh, to take a look. So further uh, pictures here just to see the cosmetic marvel of this vehicle and how great condition it was and how much value it still holds. No scratches, no buffs, no nothing going on here. Beautiful condition here as you can see. It was in spectacular condition, cosmetically. Again, no scratches, no dents, no nothing going on here. The mufflers of, Vespa is, of a Vespa is really where you often see all the wear. Uh, since a muffler is going to heat up the exhaust pipe, they heat up so much and then cool down, you will often see a lot of rust accumulate on these. If you go around town and you see a Vespa, take a look at the muffler, you're going to see it's all brown and flaky with the rust just dying to fall apart or whatever. This Vespa though, my Vespa, Absolutely immaculate. It still has the black enamel coating on there. No rust at all. It is in pristine condition, save for its a recent unfortunate incident. Again, the engine kept it well clean, well taken care of. It is in beautiful condition. Beautiful condition. No sun bleaching on here. We do have a little water stain from the rain it felt this morning. And no gummy grips. Everything fresh here. All the places where a Vespa usually sees quick wear and tear, this Vespa is in beautiful condition. No key marks here, no scratches on the dash, perfect. I will say the clock is not working, but that is an LR44 battery which only has a seven year lifespan, so bummer. The tires, another place you always see quick wear. Um, the rear tire especially will show signs of wear soonest, but as you can see here, the tread life is very, very healthy. And again, no rust here. So all this to say, pristine, pristine vehicle of mine. It is not average, it is not 1010. I believe it does have a much higher value than that. So what is my demand after all this? My demand is $2,300. I believe that is a fair price for the settlement here. And I'll show you briefly or inform you of how I came to, those, to that number. I looked at the average difference between the NAD value NADA, sorry, value and the current listed market price of the 50 cc vehicles we looked at earlier. So those ones that are actually comparable to my Vespa, I basically said this one, for example, was, is listed for $2,000. NADA says it's worth $970. So I took the difference there of all those 50 cc's and I averaged it and um, added that to the NADA value uh, that my Vespa has. I also, so I considered that value. I also considered the average value of those comparable vehicles, just their playlisting price, took the average of those. And finally, just for another final check, I looked at the average depreciation from MSRP by Kelly Blue Books from that value we looked at earlier, the 75%. I used all of that as consideration for this number of 2,300. So that is all. I thank you all so much for your time and your consideration here. Again, I truly do respect your time and I apologize for making you watch this video, but I like to do my research well and uh, I hope that this, uh, yeah, that this has shown all of that. Thank you. I wait to hear from you.